Hey, what's up you guys? It's B, and if you know, you know, but if you don't know, I'm on a journey to lose 100 pounds, and I'm taking y'all along with me on the ride. If you want to support the struggle, you would go ahead and subscribe. That rhymed really well. Is it just me, or are we finally getting good at the intro after six months of doing this? Anyway, so I have seen this comment for a long time time on my channel. Probably since I began my channel, I've been seeing comments like this. And then all of a sudden, my suggested has been engulfed with this challenge. So I finally succumbed to it and I'm like, okay, all right, we'll check it out. Because honestly, on surface level, this does not seem like something that I would like for two reasons. No, I'm not talking about the officially unofficial 5K merch, even though I should be talking about it because it's the officially unofficial 5K that we're doing on the 18th through the 24th of October. It's free to join. We are raising money for World Central Kitchen. We've currently raised close to $15,000 and 100% of the profits made from the t-shirt go to World Central Kitchen. Okay, shameless plug over. No, but if you're a woman, you know that prancing around isn't exactly comfortable when you have breasts. But anyway, I did some research and I was kind of impressed and I was like, are we doing this? I think we're doing this. We're gonna be doing the jump rope challenge. So it turns out that jumping rope is a really effective cardio exercise. The main study that's cited in like pretty much all of the articles that I read on jumping rope is a 2013 study where they took a group of participants, split them in two groups. They had one group do 10 minutes of skipping rope a day. They had the other group do 30 minutes of jogging a day. And then at the end of the experiment, they saw that both groups saw the same amount of improvement of their cardiovascular health within the six weeks that the experiment was carried out. I'll link that study below if you want to read up on it. So that means that you could get the same results from jumping rope as jogging in a third of the time. I don't know about you, but I am interested in efficient, <laughs> convenient workouts. <laughs> I just am. I, I'm sorry. I mean, it's appealing. It's sexy. Also, there's the appeal of improving coordination and it's a total body workout because most of your major muscle groups are active when you're jumping rope. And something that was really surprising to me that I did not know and I was like, what? When I read it was jump rope is actually considered a low impact workout. I was like, wait, but what about your joints? And the answer to that is pretty simple. It's basically, you just need to be doing the proper form of the exercise. And we'll get into that a little bit later on in the video when I actually start jumping rope. So I'm going to challenge myself for seven days, every single day to do 1000 jumps per day, which may seem overly ambitious for someone who lacks grace in, you know, like everyday simple situations, um, who hasn't touched a jump rope since elementary school, who honestly probably hasn't even jumped since they developed but you know what at this point overly ambitious and delusional is kind of my brand so I, I don't know what to tell you it's just how I am I have a heightened sense of self ability and I'm humbled really quickly every single time but do I learn no so step one of this challenge get a jump rope we have already taken care of that I ordered this off of Amazon my only criteria for the jump rope was that it was weighted because that's when when I was researching that said it it helps. I don't know. Step number two, and it's why we're sitting in this parking lot in a hot ass car doing this intro. I need a high impact sports bra. You guys have seen my running videos. You have seen. Why does running suck so much? You have seen me flopping around in those videos. Anyway, we're going to pop into the Target. We're going to get a high impact sports bra to help protect thine chesticular region. Because I don't even want to know what kind of toll gravity is going to play with 7,000 jumps. So let's go. There's not a ton of options in the high impact variety, but there's at least some. This bra was not it. I almost guillotined a nipple with the front zip action because it was too small and they didn't have a larger size. So as you guys saw in last week's vlog, I took this back and got this extremely padded number from Walmart that I didn't like aesthetically, but it did its job. Okay, let's do it to it. So proper jump rope form involves jumping on a surface with some give, such as a wooden gym floor, with a slight bend in your knees, and landing softly on the balls of your feet, only jumping about one to two inches off the ground. 
Landing softly is the biggest struggle for me because, like, you know that sound it makes when people wear high heels? I make that sound in tennis shoes. I clump around like a Clydesdale. So, like, I did my best, but I guess I don't really know what it means to land softly, so hopefully you have a better idea. That was only 100. I have to just do that nine more times. And we're at 1,000. <laughs> So here we are day two. I am going to try jumping on a different surface today. Today we're gonna to be jumping in the grass instead of on this wood porch. I'm wearing cheetah pants. We're feeling sassy. We're feeling ready to go, except for my calves are tender. A little bit tenderino. Anyway, we're gonna get our thousand jumps in and call it a day. <laughs> It is not easy. Probably the most frustrating thing is having to stop every five seconds because you don't have the coordination to jump over a rope. Yeah, the grass just straight up isn't gonna work. The ground's too uneven and the grass is too high. Back to the wood it is. Jump rope sucks. <sighs> Do you think it matters if you have a jump rope or not? Like, can I just jump 1,000 times a day? Because this is not working. It's just whipping me. <laughs> uh... Yeah, we're just gonna forget the jump rope for today because my patience is thin, unlike my thighs. <laughs> been putting off jumping today because it feels like my calves have two full-blown rum hams slapped to the back of them. Rum ham! I'm sorry, rum ham! And if you don't know what I mean, I guess jump rope 1,000 times a day, three days in a row, and you'll know. They're just tight and like bulbous, and they don't feel great. Like they just feel- Rum ham! So I guess we're just gonna foam roll and hope for the best because otherwise I don't think that I can make it through a thousand today because my calves are so freaking tight they feel like they're gonna burst. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? Like it is not ideal. <laughs> It's over, it's over. It's result day and my hams could not be happier. They are so glad that it's over and they finally get a chance to recoup because this challenge was very hard on my calf muscles. So this morning I weighed in, I took pictures, I did my measurements, all of that good stuff. So without further ado, let's just jump into the weight loss results and then I'll tell you everything I think about jump rope afterwards. When I began this challenge, I weighed 217.7 pounds. And this morning I tipped the scales at 215.6 pounds. So that's a loss of 2.1 pounds, bringing my grand total for my entire fitness journey to 36.8 pounds lost. And now getting into the measurements, as you can see, I didn't lose a whole lot and I really wasn't expecting to lose a whole lot from 2.1 pounds lost in a week, but I did lose like a fourth of an inch upper body area and I gained a fourth of an inch on my calves, which might just be because they're so tight, like the muscles bunched up right now um, and they need to be loosened. <laughs> 
but I just thought that was funny. Getting into the pictures, again, not seeing any difference at all. I mean, how are you going to really see a fourth of an inch, you know? It's very difficult. The only difference I'm seeing is bad lighting in both, but might as well run through them anyway, regardless. Um, yeah, pretty much identical. Yep, same. Okay, because it is so important to mention, the diet that I ate while doing this challenge was the same that I have been this entire time, pretty much. I've been eating my same 1,555 calories a day. There's all sorts of examples of like the foods that I've been eating and I've pretty much just been doing what I always do diet-wise. Here is the 100% true tea on these challenge videos. Because in the present moment, I have racked up quite a few challenges so I can speak from experience. It's true what they say, that weight loss happens in the kitchen. Like it's 100% my diet. I aim to lose two pounds a week, so I'm not really surprised at that 2.1 pound loss. So I, I just thought that that was important to say. Here's how I feel about jump roping. So it definitely is a good cardio activity. It definitely got my heart rate up and it's definitely not an easy exercise. You know, you just think like, oh, I'm just gonna skip rope like a thousand times per day, but no. <laughs> at least that was my like misconception. And I'm very pleasantly surprised to report that I didn't experience any joint pain whatsoever while doing this. And I definitely did try to follow the proper form, you know, I, that was conscious in my head while I was doing the exercise. But however, there was muscle soreness. 100% of it was in my calves or in my gastrocnemius muscles, if you want to get fancy. But seriously, my hams, as I have come to call them, could not be sore if they tried. It's 100% a calf focused workout. It feels like anyway because my calves have been on fire for like a week now. They feel massive. They feel like the leg version of Popeye's forearms. The foam roller does help and also I soaked in a plethora of Epsom salt to try to like take away some of that soreness and I think that's what got me through the week. I don't know and I also did feel like kind of embarrassed doing it. I do some really cringy things on this channel. I mean who could forget this moment? <laughs> But for whatever reason, standing there jumping, even when I had the rope, it was 10 times more embarrassing when I didn't have the rope, believe me. But even when I had the rope, it still felt silly. I think that like I'm most self-conscious when I can like feel my belly jiggling or whatever. And that was definitely a thing that was happening whilst jumping up and down for 1000 times a day. I'm sure that that's what it is because the reason why I don't wear tank tops and stuff is because I can feel like my arms jiggle more when I don't have them surrounded in cloth. So I think that that's one of my insecurities and I think that's probably why I didn't really enjoy jump roping that much. Like I said, it is a pretty decent activity. Once I start weightlifting, I think that that might be when I would use jump roping as like kind of a warm up for that. But anyways guys, those are my thoughts on jump roping. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.